Hello everybody, in today's demonstration, we're gonna be focusing on Deswick's Data Management Solution, the MDM, which stands for Mining Data Management. The goal of this tool is to have all of your data in one central location and one single source of the truth. And in return, improving productivity, mitigating risks, and allowing for some standardization of conforming to site-specific procedures and processes. But before we dive into this desktop client version, I want to open up Deswick CAD. This Deswick CAD that I have on my screen should look familiar to many of us who have used Deswick in the past. So getting started here, just a quick understanding on how the MDM integrates with Deswick CAD, we have something called the MDM CAD plugin. This can be found in the top left hand corner of your screen when you click on it. Deswick MDM tab will open up here. This is going to be the area library that you can find the latest information from that mind site. The goal here is to promote collaboration and develop improved decision making, visibility of ongoing work, and transparent data for everybody. What you see here is an example of different departments and different planning horizons. For example, if I expand life of mine, the life of mine team will own these categories, short term will own these categories, and so forth from here. Taking this a step further, notice in my layer control, I have no data, I'm in document one. If I want to reference some information into my document one or any design that I have open, I will use this CAD plugin. To do so here, I'm going to go into specifically for survey, and I'm interested in understanding where are all the survey development solids. So if I click on this layer survey development solids, notice some filters populate here. I'm just going to hit append now because I'm wanting to load in the entire mines survey development solids. These filters that we do have at the bottom of our screen here will allow us to choose the mine and level of interest. But more specifically here, when this data does load, notice I can rotate around. I can use this data as reference information. It is displaying this ref layer structure here. If I do click on a piece of this information here, notice I do have attributes associated with this data on my screen. So more specifically, if I have level 350, I can go into the MDM here and say I'm only interested and looking at level 350. I'm going to go ahead now and hit a pen. It's now going to ping that database and bring this information in. Now, one area of interest that MDM specializes in is spatial database. So specifically, right now, we're leveraging the power of attributes. Now we're going to do an exercise where we can leverage the power of spatial. So to go ahead here, I'm going to go to my layer control. I'm just going to remove this previous survey information that we were working on. When I delete this, I did not delete this from the MDM database. This is just my personal document one that I'm referencing data from the MDM. In this example now, I'm going to go ahead and choose a survey CMS stope or a scan or a drone pickup. In this example here, I'm going to find the stope of interest. So I'll go ahead and choose a stope name. And then I'm also interested, well, how did that CMS scan pickup perform against the design? So I'm going to go and reference in maybe my design holes, my charged holes, my drone blast stope shape. And then previously before, maybe there was a stope shape that was designed by the short term design. I'm going to go ahead and choose the issued for construction stope. At this point now, I'm going to hit append. So what that's done here, now notice my layer control. I have all this data as reference. Again, I can go ahead and rotate around, but more specifically here, if I click on one of these stope shapes, each one of them specifically will have that stope name that I've leveraged in this example. Now this is great, but maybe I also want to bring in data above me, below me, any data that may be interacting with this stope shape of interest, potentially causing some overbreak and underbreak. So we'll do a visual reconciliation here. I'm going to go back into my plan view area. And within my plan view screen here, I have a couple additional options. So I'm going to turn off these categories of interest. And as I do so, I'm now going to say, 
what development solids are below, below and above me. So I'll go to development solids here. And then within this development solid screen, I have this opportunity not to choose mine and level, but to use my current view X, Y bounds. So if I do that here, notice my X bounds and my Y bounds, and I'm going to turn off zoom all, but now I will hit append. At this point now, it's going to bring in any development solids that were within my view. It never does crop that information. So some of these solids here were within this view of interest. So it'll go ahead and bring that in. But just to kind of rotate around here, notice not the full de development solids of the full mind came in, only that area of interest. To take this a step further, we can actually take this stope shape. And now instead of using current view X, Y bounds, I can use filter by spatial bounds. When I do that, it brings in this spatial box here. So specifically, I can now go ahead and say, just bring in any survey development solids or CMS stopes um, or raises or diamond drills or any additional information that I also want to see how this stope interacted with. So in my example now, I'm going to go ahead and hit append. At this point now, I'm going to turn off this bounding box. And notice here we had some stopes underneath that area of interest that have also got displayed within my design. At this point now, I may also want to review this by uh, taking a look at it in long section view. So I can go ahead and use plane by two points here, cut through this stope shape, turn on my clipping, take a look at this stope. Sometimes I also like to look at this in plan view also. So I'm just gonna go um, within this view here that I'm reviewing. I'll turn off my clipping, I'll turn on my working plan view, and now I can see within this design of interest, we can see this working plane. Potentially there were some structures guiding this stope shape. So I'm gonna go ahead now and go into my geology information, and I'm gonna choose the gray shells. At this point now I'm going to hit append, and it's going to ping the MDM database and bring in any grade shells. So in this example here, again, I can walk through this area of interest, but more maybe what I'm wondering is, how did this stope perform, or why did this stope perform in a certain area? Why was there overbreak? Why was there underbreak? Maybe this grade shell or this structure was causing it to perform in a, in a certain way. I'm gonna just click on this grade shell, Notice there's some attributes here. It says the lens associated with it, but I want a bit more information here. So I'm just going to double click this URL. At this point right now, it's going to direct me to the area of how this data got imported and placed into the MDM system. I can see the workflow. I can see who worked on it, when they worked on it. But more importantly, I can see any attachments and comments and versions of this structure that I'm interested in. So I'm going to go ahead here and click on this PDF and I can see a bit of a report that maybe was generated that can provide us a bit of context of how this structure came to be. Also within this structure it looks like that there was a an approval process associated with it. I can click on it. I can see the checklist that the user filled out and now I understand a little bit more how this data was placed into the MDM system and maybe how this data might be affecting my stope shape of interest. In the next video, I will be going through examples on how to run workflows to place this data into the MDM environment.